Thanks for joining us on EMN5. Today we're going to be talking about Wernicke's encephalopathy. And Wernicke's encephalopathy is an acute neuropsychiatric syndrome that's caused from thiamine or B1 deficiency. Basically, you have poor nutrition, which leads to the deficiency. This depletes the intracellular stores, which leads us to cell death eventually. And the reason thiamine is important is because it's a cofactor for many of the really important enzymes in energy metabolism. And thiamine is needed the most in a couple different situations, when metabolic demand is very high in order to make the energy, and also when glucose intake is very high. And we'll remember that for later when we're talking about treatment. Now remember, Wernicke's affects the brain most specifically, and that's because metabolic demands and needs of thiamine are very high in the brain, and also thiamine turnover is very high in a couple of the different areas. Now normally we think of this as a disease of alcoholics. We do see about 90% is related to alcohol abuse, um, the deficiencies are, but all these other things can cause deficiency too. It's basically anything that causes a malnutrition or deficiency. So patients that are anorexic or are doing severe dieting, any type of uh, malnutrition or starvation can cause it. Um, people that have a lot of GI losses, so for example, hyperemesis of pregnancy, people with Crohn's disease, and also patients that have poor absorption, so people that have had gastric bypass surgery or other abdominal surgeries affecting absorption. While we mostly see this in the ER and alcoholics, it's not really just the alcohol intake specifically that increases their risk. It has to be a component of malnutrition as well, which is why we tend to see this more in people that are homeless and alcoholics because they have poor intake. So you have to have poor food intake. There also has to be a component of low absorption, and alcoholics um, get this specifically because they have some duodenal mucosal damage because of the alcohol, and they also have poor hepatic storage. So all of this comes together and really makes alcoholics that are malnourished our most high-risk population. Okay, here's a little board's question for you. What do we see in 80% of brains on autopsy? Good. Well, the answer is down there at the bottom. It's mammary body atrophy. Okay, let's talk symptoms. So there's a triad that you'll see in these patients that you really need to look out for and have a high clinical suspicion for, and that's altered mental status, diplopia, and ataxia. So let's talk about each of these. As far as the altered mental status, this can be confusion or even just inattentiveness, agitation. They can be disoriented. And we see this in a lot of our alcoholics, right? So that's not that helpful for us, which is why I think it's the second two you really have to pay attention to. For diplopia, other things you can see is nystagmus, which you do see a lot in alcoholics, and also a lateral rectus palsy. So you can see that down in this patient here. You're asking him to look over here towards his left, and he has a lateral palsy in the left eye there. And then the result of this is you'll get diplopia. So ask your patients, are you seeing double You know when you're doing your exam? Here's a really great example of nystagmus in a patient. You can see it on both sides here. This is in a video posted by USD Medicine. I have the link at the end. As far as a taxi, you're mostly going to see this in their gait. So they're going to have a really wide base gait, some shuffling steps, and sometimes if it's really bad, it could be the patients can't actually walk at all. Here's an example of a patient with a wide base gait who has a lot of gait ataxia. And this is also in a video posted of different gait disturbances with a link at the end. You can see there's a lot of difficulty with standing here. Here are a couple other symptoms. You might end up seeing some things like tachycardia, hypothermia, hypotension, um, some different hearing loss. They could have seizures, hallucinations. These are all just things to keep um, in mind when you're thinking through the Wernicke's picture. So untreated, 20% of these patients will go on to have coma or death. That's pretty significant. And 75% will have some kind of chronic brain damage and memory loss, which is the Korsakoff syndrome. So this is really a clinical diagnosis. There really isn't you know, a lab test that you can do to see if their thiamine deficiency is there. Um, one other thing to think about is if they're febrile, consider doing an LP. And just think through your diagnosis of any patient with altered mental status. The treatment is pretty easy. You need to give them thiamine back again. This whole thing is caused by a thiamine deficiency. And so for a patient where you're concerned for Wernicke's, it's not just your standard 100 milligrams dose that you might give an alcoholic. Instead, you're going to do 500 milligrams over 30 minutes IV, and you're going to be doing that three times a day. It's worth starting it in the ER and seeing if they get some improvement over the next few hours to days. Now, here's what I want to also mention. When are you supposed to give the thymine? You're supposed to give it before you give sugar, correct? 
So why is that? Well, remember when we talked about before that glucose intake, having a high glucose intake can actually increase the thymine demand intracellularly. That's one of the causes. So you can actually precipitate Wernicke's in a patient who is high risk by giving them sugar before you give them thymine. So really think about that. Even if it's just a high risk patient, make sure you're giving them thymine before you give them glucose. Okay, three to remember for Wernicke's encephalopathy. This is a B1 or thymine deficiency. People that are at risk are people who are have starvation, who have a deficiency, and this especially affects alcoholics. The triad you're going to be looking for is altered mental status, diplopia, and ataxia. And the treatment's easy. It's thymine. Just make sure to give it before glucose. Here's some references, and thanks for joining us on EM in 5.